Augustus is still already expanding, doubling the size of the empire. Wait, wh what am I re- Oh, also he's the first emperor. One day, the emperor Caligula was walking somewhere when he saw a horse. Caligula took the horse from the farmer and went home, declaring that one day his horse would be consul. They did stop, and one day Caligula declared war on Neptune, following without a case his belly, plunging his empire into more instability. But to be honest, I doubt Caligula really even knew about this. He claimed victory over the sea and collected seashells as his trophies, which he proudly displayed to politicians before feeding them to his horse. They lived happily ever after. until Caligula was assassinated by the Praetorian Guard. The end. Claudius created a very meta strategy by doing some conquest in Britannia that a bunch of future noob emperors tried. The first emperor to be born outside of Italy, Claudius was born in Gaul in present day Lyon. Which is totally illegal, you never know if he's a terrorist. Nero took care of the pesky Brits, but aggressive expansion caused the regiment of Boudicca rebels to rise up in Camalodunum and they burned London down. Nero ruled for a great long 13 years, so Galba staged a revolt. Nero fled Rome and committed suicide after he was given the title public enemy, making him the first emperor to commit seppuku. Wait, wrong continent. Some letters were found detailing the year after the coup d'etat. The author credited with writing them is Bob Saget. Here are the letters summarized. Galba takes over as new emperor. One year has passed and it is now year 69, a very important year because it comes up all the time on Latin quiz bowl. Galba was killed by a praetorian guard led by Otho. Otho took over. Then Vitellus decided to march on Rome and Otho took the cyanide pill. Vitellius took over, then Vespasian decided to march on Rome. Vitellius decided to stay and look more at his palace, and he was killed by Vespasian's men. Vespasian won everything. Vespasian started the Flavian dynasty, which was made up of a father and his two sons. The father, Vespasian, did lots of propaganda to convince the people that he was the rightful leader. Like all propaganda, it worked. When he died, his son Titus, who had destroyed Jerusalem, came to power. During his rule, Mount Vesuvius erupted, and a fire and a plague swept through Rome. Titus soon died, and his brother Domitian took over as a cruel but efficient emperor that the people loved. But the Senate still hated him. Then Domitian was assassinated, and a new person took over. This new person was Nerva, which marked the beginning of a new dynasty. He gave his name to the dynasty. Trajan was called the best ruler by the Senate, and the empire was at its highest extent under his rule. Hadrian liked beards and building walls. Antoninus Pius liked peace. Marcus Aurelius was a stoicist who wrote a manuscript we call Meditations. These first five emperors made up the five good emperors. Marcus's brother, who ruled along with him, was apparently not so good, though that was just Machiavelli's opinion. Lucius Verus conquered the Armenians, Parthians, and Medes. Commodus was the last. People thought he was. <laughs> he was killed on December 31st, ending the dynasty. On a totally related note, either Antoninus Pius or Marcus Aurelius sent an envoy to Han China, resulting in the first contact between the two. Pertinax was made emperor by the Praetorian Guard, and he was murdered by the Praetorian Guard, who sold the emperorship to Didius Julianus, who was soon executed by the Senate. So two deaths in a year, still not as bad as the year of the form. Oh wait, I forgot about the other people. Pascanius, um... Pascanius claimed the throne after Pertinax died. Claudius Albinus was proclaimed emperor after Pertinax died by some random soldiers. He rejected the claim. Septimius Severus was an ally of Pertinax and practically was the emperor after Pertinax died. Also, Severus was the one who ordered the execution of Didius Julianus. The next year, he defeated Nair and killed him. Three years after that, Claudius Albinus claimed the throne again and was defeated by Severus, who became the sole emperor. And according to Reddit user Don't Want to See Your Cat, Snape is related. So the year of the five wasn't that bad. It could have been six if Commodus was assassinated one day late. Under Septimius Severus's rule, the empire was actually at its largest of Romanized land, unlike Trajan, where a decent amount of land was merely occupied. Geta and Caracalla were brothers who ruled Rome together, so naturally Caracalla had Geta killed. Caracalla gave everyone passports, except the slaves. 
Macrinus came to power, proclaimed his son Diadumenian co-emperor, and both were executed by Elagabalus, who was proclaimed emperor by some soldiers in Syria, even though he was only 15. And then, three years later, Elagabalus was murdered by the Praetorian Guard who installed Severus Alexander, who was later murdered by the army. So basically, Snape was the only guy who actually did stuff. Okay, on to the next <coughs> Oh no, how am I going to do all these emperors? Half of them literally have their face on their coin as their official picture. Oh, I know, I'll, I'll act like I actually know things about them and speak as fast as I can so that I can go through every single one of them and people will think I know I'm actually talking about things. And now we're at the Tetrarchy in the Constantine Dynasty. Uh, actually, the period of the Tetrarchy in the Constantine Dynasty was really complicated for a simple search, so this is a topic for a later video. For the rest of the time here, I'll be talking only about the Western Emperors, as the East is a topic for another time. After the death of Jovian, technically the last of the Constantines, even though he wasn't really good, Valentinian the first was elected by the army to replace Jovian. Then Valentinian his sons, Gratian and Valentinian his second came to rule. Gratian rule was nice and Christianity became dominant to the empire, but Antony the second was just a puppet head who did nothing. Lucius the second was Eastern Emperor at the time. Constantius the third, no, not Constantine the third, was also made king, but by Honorius because he married Honorius's daughter. Johannes, the servant to Honorius, and Valentinian the third, the son of Constantius the third, both tried to become emperor. So Johannes was killed by Theodosius the second and Valentinian the third, the latter becoming emperor of the West. Then he ruled for thirty years, and oh by the way, there were three emperors who ruled for around thirty years. So Illuminati confirmed, but then he was assassinated by Petronius Maximus, who the Wikipedia page puts under the last emperors of the Western Empire category, which we'll talk about now. And the last emperors were all crappy. Oh wait, I need a conclusion. The best emperor was... The Praetorian Dead. <laughs>